This is my extended explanation of my blackjack game in Python. I made this video because my last one was rather rushed because to enter it for the coolest projects I had to cap it at two minutes. So to start I'm gonna show you how the game how the game runs. So I'm gonna show you the rules. No, I've got 11, so I'm going to press T to twist, and then S to stick, now I've got 18. The computer and me had the same scores, so it's a tie. Now again, it will play again after a certain amount of time, as you just saw. And it's different number of spots, and uh, something new I've added, I'm going to exit out of that. Now... So this is my code, I've got all my imports at the top, mainly the different files I've used, my functions file, my graphics file, and my hand file, or my class file, which is why this is a bit different from all the others, because I've imported my class from the file, and I've also used Pygame, which is something you have to download, the link should be below. The rule just means that it's just used to say today I don't have a rules input yet. Now this starts the game. My window function starts the game. Which is in my graphics file. So I've imported Python here, Pygame here. Now this sets it up. And my different colours using red, green and blue values. This sets up the basic font that I have used in my cards. Now my window function is here, so I have my width and my height constants. The global window service bit means that the window service variable can be used in all the functions in this file, which I've set up using this bit here. This literally just sets the caption to blackjack, and this makes the screen green, and this update actually draws it onto the screen so we can all see it. So once the window is drawn, I display the blackjack, like the title of the game, and I also ask if they want to see the rules. And then I press update so it is all drawn on there. So to do this I've used the display text function I made, which is here, right at the bottom. And it takes the text, what you actually want to say. The X position and the Y position as parameters. So this sets up the text in black. And this tree means it's filled in. And this bit makes what is called a rect. Which I guess is like an invisible rectangle around the text or what the text is drawn on. Which means I can adjust the position and sometimes with shapes and images, even adjust the size. So this dot left sets the left value of the text to X and dot top sets the, the top edge to the Y value. And lit here preliminarily draws it onto the window, but you need to update it to actually see it on your screen. So this while loop means that the screen will keep up until either the user presses Y or N. Now if the user presses Y, these walls are displayed, again using my display text function. And then I use sleep to wait 15 seconds once that's all displayed, so the user can read it. Now I've put all my game loop in a massive big while loop so that it will keep on running until 
I decide to exit. Here I make two class objects, a player hand and a computer hand, which is written in this file. Now it's what's called a class, which is basically a template. So each hand I make will have a name and a list of card faces and a list of the corresponding card values. Now the getters and setters here will set the card about the class variables and it also means that I can be able to use them in my normal file and code. Now this sets the card positions for the each card and the y position is the same so that's why they're in capital letters because it's their constants again i call the window again which basically draws another window which resets it i've used my display function again to label the hands so the user knows which is which and i've used a for loop here to deal the player two cards and the computer two cards and I've assigned which is here using the function in this profile in this file now it takes the user hand i.e the player hand or the computer hand the x position of their cards and the y position of the card so the new card is set to blank so while A new card isn't chosen. This try and accept loop will mean that it will try to pick a random element from this list, which is the whole, all the cards of a whole pack, of a whole deck of cards, and then it will then remove this new choice from the list, so that you don't get double cast. However. Once the list is finished, then the error springs up. So this accept bit here means that it catches the error. And so my response to that is to make a new variable called new pack, which is literally the same, the whole pack, again. And it will loop through each element in that pack and add it back to the original faces list. To try again and then because it's a while loop it will try again and then it should be able to pick up the card now once a new card has been chosen it will add that card to the hand list now this bit in the colons here will pick the first character from the new card so if it's a jack, queen or kin. It will add the card value of 10 to the list, to the card value list. And if it's a 1, it would add the value of 10 to the card value list again, because that means that the card is 10, as there is no one card in the pack. Now if it's any other, and if it's an ace, then it will add the value 11. And if it's any other card, it will add the integer version of that value to the value lesson to the value list. It will then draw that card at the x position and y position necessary for it to be separate and still with the right hand using this draw card function in my graphics file. So first, it will draw the white background on the card. So I set constants for the width and the height. And then this actually draws the white rectangle. As it takes X and Y and the card face for parameters, the digit is the first character for the card face. So we, like what number value is or jack, queen, king, or ace. Now, if it, if it is a 1, 
Then the digit is the card face is two digits, meaning it's a 10. And the suit is always the last character, which is why it's got minus one, because it's counting backwards. Now this if statement here will check for the suit. So if the suit is a H or a D, meaning a heart or a diamond, the card number will be written in red, which is the digit written in red. And then if it's not, which means it's a card, it's a club or a spade, then the digit is written in black. Now this makes again a rex, which is an invisible rectangle around the value and then it is moved to the top corner and it's 7.5 points or 7.5 pixels inside the card and then the blip draws it on now this bit is to display the suit image so the number of spots in the cards and i've made a dictionary here so these are all the keys which is the card value and then i have a list of the number of spots they have and their x positions and then i've made the same thing here with their y positions so i can call the x positions of each plot each spot on say the number nine by calling nine as shown here so so for each spot in the range of the length of the i just use x position and of the digit so if it's a nine it will call nine and we'll see that this list here is nine spots long. Now the C image, again, it creates a rectangle and it's saying it's right in the center of the card. And this is just to make it really. But then I must change the center to the key and then the list and then the element in that list for the number of times it's looped through so if it's nine it will loop through nine times and then let's check what suit it is to so load the right image now this scales it down to the right size and this actually draws it on And this updates it so the card is actually drawn. Now, in the game, only one of the computer cards can be shown. So I've made a cover up function to cover up the second card which is drawn. Oh, and here, the X is 72 is added to the X to move the card. So the next card is drawn 72 points along. So, for the covering up, <laughs> it draws a green rectangle over where the card should be. That's all it does, just takes the X and Y and draws the card where it should be. Now, this gets the front, gets the total of each hand and converts it to a string so I can display it and I'll use the get total function here so here the cards are what the card values are from the class and then I set the total for zero and it will loop through the list of the cards and add each of the values to the total and then it will return it
Now I set the first tense to player and the player move is blank. So while the player move isn't stick and they haven't busted yet and neither of the people have busted yet, if the turn is player as it is, if the user presses T, player move is stick, if they press S, if they press T, player move is twist, if they press S, player move is stick. Now if it's twist, they will do a new card and get the new total. And then you'll check for ace, to see to change to one if it's bust, as here, which is done here. So I get the card values. It first checks if the value total is bigger than 21, so if you bust. Because that's the only time you will really want to change it. Now, it will check to see the value 11 is in the card values. To you see if there's an unchanged ace in there. So even bother trying it. If it is, then it will find the index of that card. And it will change it, change the value to 1. And it will reset these values again. And then it will change this total to string again, and it will display this new total, and it will update it to actually show on your screen. And then it will wait one and a half seconds before displaying the new card, so you can actually identify it and press stick if you want to. Now, if the move is stick, then the turn goes to computer. So the turn is the computers. It will draw the card. It redraws the second card again. And then the computer takes its move, which I have defined here. Now it uses a very simple algorithm, which then will get the total. And then if the total is less than 17, it will do a new card. Again, it's adding the X. Changing the x values as needed. Now it will check the total again. It will check to swap places, get the new total. And then it will display that. It will display the total again. And then it will wait three seconds. And then it will change the x at the end. But yeah, it's very simple, it just carries on twisting until you get to 17. And then it shows the computer's new total. And again, waits 3 seconds. Now, once everyone's had their turn, it sets up a new window, again, to display who wins. So it gets the token. Change you just player total and computer total to integers so it can compare them. So if the player is bigger than 21, player total bigger than 21, then the player busts, so they lost. If the computer is bigger than 21, the computer busts, so they lost. So we won. If they're the same, then it's a tie. If the player is bigger than computer, then we won. If not, the computer was closer, so they won. Now it waits 3 seconds, showing the screen, and then if I press the X, which is a quit event, it will end the program. So that is all of it. Sorry if it's a bit long and confusing, I tried my best. Goodbye.